Folks, $5,000 can be claimed right now by many Americans. Negotiations are beginning on boosted cash payments that would actually help provide financial aid to many low-income households. Here is the latest news on another round of stimulus checks. The Alaska Senate approved a state spending package, and that includes spending cash payments of $5,500 for people in Alaska. The package includes dividends of about $4,200 to residents this year as well as energy relief. These energy relief checks are about $1,300. The vote in Alaska comes as a number of other states are considering sending more direct payments to their residents as Americans continue to grapple with record high inflation and rising gas prices, driven by the crisis. The package passed 15 to 5 and was sent to the House, and it will be decided whether to agree with the Senate version. The House approved a version of the budget last month, and that included a dividend of roughly $1,250 and a $1,300 energy check. Lawmakers in recent years have been divided over the size of the dividend, traditionally paid with earnings from the state oil's wealth fund, known as the Alaska Permanent Fund. During a debate on the budget, the Senate voted 10 to 9 in support of a dividend of about $4,200. The cost for the size dividend would be nearly $2.8 billion, while the cost of the proposed energy payment is estimated at $840 million. Supporters of the Senate budget argued that Alaskans could use the financial help, while critics raised concerns about the possible fiscal consequences. The Alaska House Speaker was critical of conservative lawmakers in the state Senate for voting for a budget that could dip deeply into the state's savings. And also, everybody, over 300,000 low-income essential workers across Massachusetts will begin receiving their second round of stimulus checks this week. The $500 payment is scheduled to be mailed out starting Monday as part of the Baker's Administration Crisis Employee Premium Program. The first set of these payments were announced in February and distributed to around 480,000 people in March. This round offers another $165 million in relief funding to an estimated 330,000 eligible residents in June. Eligibility is based on Massachusetts tax terms for 2021. To qualify, you have had to make at least $13,000 and seen the total income at or below 300% of the federal poverty level. For a household of one person, that level was around $38,000. For a family of four, that would be up to $79,000. Those who received a payment in the first round or who received unemployment benefits in 2021 are not eligible for this, however. Massachusetts executive branch employees who received a one-time crisis-related payment from the state are also ineligible. The first round of payments was determined by 2020 state tax returns and followed similar criteria. Now, while there was much talk about a pending recession as the Federal Reserve takes steps to tamp down high inflation, recent reports on the health of the economy show cooling but still going strong. This is good news for the White House as the American public becomes increasingly concerned. Amid rising inflation and high gas prices, federal legislation that provide Americans with a fourth economic payment remains stalled in Congress. Democratic Representative Mike Thompson announced that he was introducing new legislation that would send eligible Americans energy rebate checks, titled the Gas Rebate Act of 2022. The legislation, which was co-sponsored by Representatives Larson and Underwood, came amid rising gas prices in the United States. Thompson sent a statement announcing the legislation, Americans are feeling the impact at the pump of the crisis, and right now we must work together. Folks, do you believe that President Biden should do more for the stimulus checks and the American people? Tell me what you think in the comments. Taxes go up by one penny. So the overwhelming majority of the American people would not see any increase in their taxes under this proposal. The tax increase in our legislation only applies to the wealthiest 6.4% of all Americans, those who make $250,000 a year or more. Further and importantly, under this bill, Social Security benefits would be increased by $2,400 a year for both new and existing recipients, lifting millions of seniors out of poverty. In addition, under this bill, we would increase COLAs for senior citizens by more accurately measuring the spending pattern for senior citizens through the Consumer Price Index for the elderly. Now, one of the reasons that I called this hearing, and I'm glad that Senator Graham has been able to uh, be here, is that there is, in fact, a strong philosophical difference between many of us in the Democratic caucus and many in the Republican caucus as to the best way forward with regard to Social Security. And that's kind of the discussion we're going to have today. Well, virtually, all members of the Democratic caucus are on record in support of expanding Social Security benefits 
The Republicans, by and large, have taken a very different approach. And I'm delighted, and I hope they will show up, that some of the Republicans who have taken strong positions on this issue, I see Senator Romney's here, and I'm glad that is the case. Look forward to hearing from him. That some of the Republicans who have taken strong positions on this issue are on this committee. And I know that they're going to be explaining where they come from, and I look forward to that debate. Earlier this year, Senator Rick Scott, the chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, released the plan that would sunset Social Security every five years, raise taxes on millions of seniors, and jeopardize the guaranteed income of 65 million Americans who depend on Social Security. Just a few months ago, the Republican Study Committee in the House, in the House, introduced the bill that would raise the Social Security retirement age to 69 years of age over the next eight years and privatize Social Security by allowing employers to divert payroll tax dollars into less generous private retirement accounts. Last year, Senator Romney, who is here with us, has opposed raising taxes on the wealthy to strengthen Social Security, introduced legislation to form a committee to propose cuts to Social Security behind closed doors. In 2020, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell told Bloomberg reporter, a Bloomberg reporter that, quote, he hopes to work with the next Democratic president to trim Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, end quote. In 2011, my colleague Senator Graham introduced legislation to raise the full retirement age to 70 by 2032 and index it to longevity. Further, in 2003, Senator Graham introduced a bill that would have cut Social Security benefits for current wage earners by 27 percent, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Now, as I think everybody knows, I don't often agree with former President Donald Trump. Uh, but this is what he said when he was campaigning for president in 2015, and he was right. He said, quote, every Republican, this is in the Republican primary, every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security, they want to do it on Medicare, and they want to do it on Medicaid, end quote. Well, let me be clear, we cannot allow that to happen. The vast majority of the American people understand that a moral society does not give tax breaks to billionaires and then cut back on the needs of struggling seniors or people with disabilities. In fact, 72% of Americans support increasing, not cutting Social Security benefits by asking millionaires and billionaires to pay more into the system. So that is where we are right now. It's a great philosophical difference. I look forward to the debate. Some of us think that the very wealthiest people in this country are doing extraordinarily well, should in fact be asked to pay more into Social Security so we can protect millions of low-income and struggling seniors. Others disagree. And with that, I'm glad that Senator Graham has been able to come. Senator Graham. 